After preparing the tissue sample, Charlie and Lauren review the fin cam footage. So let's do the last acceleration. Let's have a look what's going on. And they get a glimpse of a rare event in these waters. That's a nice, nice air there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah wow. The fin cam shows drop bear capturing prey using an accelerated breach. A high speed attack that launches him above the water's surface. A rare behavior for sharks in this region. In Falls Bay in South Africa, quite often you'd see several breaches in one morning. Down here, I've, I've only seen a handful of natural breaches. And I think it depends on the, on the conditions and the prey that they're targeting. The data from the fin cam and accelerometer illustrate the high speeds a white shark needs to reach to kill large prey, like the massive mako found decapitated earlier. If we're able to see on the fin cam a shark actually chasing some of those prey items or potentially capturing them, that's really exciting um, and really kind of validates what we're seeing. Large mature white sharks need high amounts of dense calorie to fuel their long migration patterns. And unfortunately, breaching requires a lot of energy. So we will be able to, to look at how much energy this is costing. Could smaller sub-adult sharks, like drop bear, be outmaneuvering the larger white sharks for prey in these waters? It looks like a different attack strategy for the prey around the Neptune Islands. Driving them into shallower waters for food. So essentially, I think that the white shark diet might be more based on some of these coastal species rather than some of these big offshore animals. While the data they have gives them insight into the white shark's metabolism, the sea is going to go for the fish there. They now need a way to find out what other large prey these white sharks are feeding on. This is going to be interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I'm curious to see how this is going to work. And have pioneered a one of a kind stool sample. We're hoping to collect fecal matter or fecal remnants which will then be able to analyze um, what the shark might have been feeding on. It's sensitive, it'll be tricky. It's, uh, yeah, I've got no idea how it's gonna go. White sharks have a large liver, giving them the ability to pass unneeded byproduct within hours. And the results are a fecal tornado of rich scientific data. What about the butt swab? Uh, yes, so the, uh, the cloaca swab, I was also a little bit skeptical, only because I know the science behind it is sound. It's just the logistics that are going to be really tough. When I heard about one of the, one of the experiments we wanted to do was get a, get a butt swab from a white shark, I, think I, I just laughed at the, at the first bit. Getting access to, you know, the cloaca of a free swimming shark, really, really tough. But if we can, the outcome is really exciting. What could go wrong? Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> Charlie and John will be diving 45 feet below, yeah, there you go. hoping to get near the rear of a deadly great white. Adding to the challenge, the weather turns for the worse, creating potentially dangerous conditions. With this bigger boat, it really catches the wind. So when you have these windy days like today, it can swing around a fair bit. If the sea is this rough at the surface, the currents below will be just as intense, making the sharks more active. What are you seeing? Can you repeat? We're not getting that up here. Sounds good, John. Thank you. The team aims for another shark to expand their data set. Three sub-adult sharks circle the cage. Yes, 
Is that the big shark from this morning or one of the small ones? Can't tell, I can't tell. Okay. Not close enough for a swab at all? Okay. Out of nowhere, another shark has snuck up from behind destabilizing the cage along the ocean floor. Straight off the point, you can still see some really big waves crashing. Charlie, can we get an update? Can we just get a comms check update, please? Full visibility, we're bouncing around. We're swinging pretty hard. They're working pretty hard down there, trying their best, but swinging a lot, apparently. So that'll make it extra hard to see the shark and kind of prepare before it's right next to the cage. Finally, a 13-foot shark swims close enough to the cage to be swapped. That's very, very good. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed. Well, yeah, good. Oh, oh excellent. That. that looks so good. <laughs> well done. Yeah, I got it. This is good. Yeah, if you hold that. With the cloacal swab acquired. Perfect. One. Lauren will have it analyzed to learn what these subadult white sharks are feeding on. So that's going to look really good. We'll freeze it, and then we'll be able to extract the DNA back in the lab. If his diet consists of atypical prey or an abundance of fur seals, these subadult white sharks could be controlling these feeding grounds, forcing larger white sharks close to shore and creating a seismic shift in their feeding behavior. Oh, 